my channel Welshman Reviews. Today I'm going to be reviewing the 25th installment of the James Bond series, uh, No Time to Die. So this film was directed by uh, Kari Joji Fukunaga, if I said that right, which I believe is his first feature film. I, I had a look at his uh, filmography and uh, he's done a few TV series and short films, so this is his first one. Uh, this movie stars Daniel Craig, obviously, in his last uh, appearance as James Bond. This is his fifth outing and his last one. Um, Leah Seydoc, I think I said that right, uh, who played Madeline in the last movie, re returns. As does uh, Ralph Fiennes, Ben Winshaw, Naomi Harris, who play MQ and Money Penny, respectively. They return. Uh, Rami Malek plays the new villain, uh, Safin. Uh, in this movie and Jeffrey Wright returns as well as Felix Leiter and uh, Christopher Waltz, Waltz, Waltz sorry, comes back as Blofeld so I'll, I'll go over the story a, quick, a bit quick I won't go into all of it I'll only save probably the first half because pretty much the second half of this movie onwards I'd have to go into spoilers if I wanted to go into it a bit with a bit of detail and all that so i'm going to leave this as a non-spoiler review which i'll put in the title so the beginning of the movie is we see a young madeline who is with her mother in their house in norway so remember she is the daughter of mr white from the previous uh, few movies earlier movies of daniel craig era james bond and uh, Safin, a young Safin, comes looking for revenge because Mr. White murdered his family. So he kills the mother. Uh, Madeline falls into the ice, but instead of killing her, he saves her. So we jump Ben ahead to Bond and Madeline, who are living kind of happily ever after. This scene's kind of reminded me of the end of Casino Royale with him and Vesper trying to live a peaceful life but things take a turn when Madeline won't say her secrets until Bond lays to rest his feelings and his secrets for, with Vespa so he visits Vespa's grave while they're in Italy but a bomb goes off and Blowfield tries uh, I wouldn't say tries to kill him but blows up the grave and Bond so he's on the telephone with her with him and he gets like a phone call from it and he decide he they get attacked by uh, Spectre agents and he can't trust Madeline anymore. He thinks she's partly responsible for all this, so he puts her on a train and says, "You'll never see me again." So they split up. So then you kind of jump five years into the future again now and all that. So and then you have Spectre agents who are infiltrate in an mi6 secret laboratory off the books laboratory and um uh, kidnap a scientist and a new biological weapon which targets certain people's dna and all that so you can kill someone without no collateral damage so felix like the hunts down bond who's in jamaica and tries to get him to help him and his, he's got like a new partner who's sucking up the bond and all that um who's trying to they're trying to get him on board with them because they're cia and mi6 are not really speaking about all this and all that so then you find see the new 007 who is played by lashana lynch who plays normie 007 so she's the new one and you can see bond as a little uh is a little niggling on him that uh, she is the new 007 and uh, they've used his uh, code so she tells him to try and stay away from it but unfortunately he helps uh he helps felix get the um scientist back and all that so so he manages to get the scientist out with help from anna de Marmos, who plays paloma she is a uh CIA agent so you might recognize her from Knives Out and uh, 
a knock knock I think it's called as well so it's been a few of them films so yeah that's, they get him and manage to get him out but when he goes to Felix they get double crossed by the um, the other CIA agent and all that so and then we get the whole story of them trying to get the thing but is is other aspects of the story but I with Madeline so she's part of the story as well and all that like a Sathin gets to her because he saved her life and he tells her uh, she's got to try uh, she's got to uh, do something for him so, which I'm not going to say what because from this point onwards in the movie if I was to explain the movie it's really a full on spoiler then and all that so you get the old beats in for the rest of the movie and all that kidnaps rescue you know rescue action points and all that but yeah really good um i will go into my positives first before the negatives i've only got a couple of negatives but let's pile on with positives um great last outing for daniel craig it's one of his better acting for, um, chops for james bond i don't think it's his best i i, I still find his best is skyfall um i'd probably put this just above how he acted in just his acting i'll put it just above casino royale i will but yeah the acting all around in this movie is really good even though some of the actors which i'll get into the characters which i'll get into my negatives are a bit um, light in my opinion but um, like i said lasasha lynch who plays uh double the new 007 She's really good as one of the newcomers. Sami Ra Rami Malik does a really good job as a sinister villain. Um, you know, Christopher Waltz. Be honest, man, you've seen his scene really. If you if you watch the trailer, you've seen his scene pretty much. But yeah, they all do it. Ralph Fiennes, Ben Winshaw, Naomi Harris. They, even though they only have little parts in the movie, they all do their jobs very uh, very good. Um, I love the locations, like any John Bond film. The locations are really the standout of these movies, and you have some cracking ones in this one. Like the beginning is um, Italy uh, with Bond and Madeline, and they're in a little town. I forgot what the town is called, the village is called, but it's absolutely beautiful and uh, somewhere I'd love to vi visit one day. Um, you know, they have scenes for in Jamaica. Uh, I think. Cuba in the movie but I think Jamaica I, I've read that Jamaica doubles for the Cuba scenes as well and they suppose you go to Norway as well on it so yeah it's some beautiful locations um, the direction's adequate I don't think he's, he did a good job uh, the director did um, kind of seems similar to the other movies to be honest and all that so uh, not, not anything new really from him um the music's really good as well hands it hands him you know does some of the music for this movie and all that but then you get the old bond theme obviously playing for the movie and they do a very nice touch in the beginning and the end of the movie where bond said uh, like bond answers a question by saying we have all the time in the world and then you have a nice little instrument instrumental version of uh by louis armstrong's that uh, it we have all the time in the world playing in a bit of the background when they're in Italy and then it plays at the end of the movie as well so that's a nice little throwback I noticed a few throwbacks from probably some of the older movies and all that like obviously the car with the guns and the gadgets uh, there was a few other scenes in the movie as well so that was nice as well to see um, I think that's it for my positives my only couple of negatives is um, probably some of the acts the characters are not fleshed out enough unfortunately um like i said the new 007 as good as she is in her scenes they don't really give her that much i would have liked to see a couple of really good action scenes with her in like better action scenes uh rami uh, malik safin as well i think is kind of a weak villain and all that it kind of has the same problem for me as the last movie spectre you don't see much of him doing the movie and he kind of turns up at the end of the last act and it's the same as blofeld as well just turns up for the last act so you don't really kind of flesh him out enough in my opinion 
and that. But the two best villains for me in James Bond, but uh, at least with the Daniel Craig ones, is um, Michael Mads, uh, Michael uh, Mads, Mad, not Madson, but Mads' uh, character from Is it a shoe from Casino Royale and uh, Zar uh, Javier. Um, I forgot the second name who plays the villain in Skyfall as well. They're two of my favourite villains in the thing because they get fleshed out a little bit more. But yeah, unfortunately for my as much as a good job he does, just doesn't get get enough time in this movie and all that. And my last say for the movie would be the ending, which I'm not going to spoil obviously. But I, I think some some are going to like it, some are going to hate it. I think it's a nice send off for. Daniel Craig's and what he's done for the character. Um, be interested to see where they go because they are going to be cast in a new Bond next year. They are. I think Henry Cavill's my top pick, but there are a few others that uh, could pip him out. Um, yeah, overall, I think it's a really good Bond movie. Third favorite in the Daniel Craig's uh, movies for me is Bond movies. I still class Casino Royale as the top one, then Skyfall, then a classic just before below that, and then Spectre and Quantum of Solace last. So, yeah, definitely well worth a watch. Doesn't feel like two hours 45 minutes because that's a long run time, but it doesn't feel like that. Kind of flies by the movie does, so that's a good thing for it. Uh, so, yeah, definitely a thumbs up from me. If you like this video give it a thumbs up leave a comment below and tell me what you thought of the movie if you're going to go and see it or what your rankings of the daniel craig's bond movies are and if you'd like to see more reviews i guess please subscribe to my channel i will see you next time bye